and we're going to start in the process library, which of course is listed under the processes header. Okay, so when I click on process library, it's going to give me a list of all of my different business processes. And of course, we're going to start with a new process. Anytime you start a new process, it'll automatically include the terminate event as well as a simple start. Uh, we're not going to be using simple start. We need to use the signal start. So I'm just going to delete everything it has by clicking these little X's. We'll go ahead and start from scratch. Uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is give my process a name. You can see it uses a very generic name, business process one to start. So let's go ahead and call this auto set. Region security. Okay. So all my process elements are controlled over here on the left hand side of the screen. Like I mentioned, we're going to be using the signal start event, which we see here listed under the start events header. Let's go ahead and start by dragging a signal start out onto the process window. So over here on the right hand side, it's going to ask me what type of signal I receive. We are going to receive an object signal, uh, and the object we're looking for is the account object. So what kind of event is going to trigger this signal? Is it going to be a record being added to the system, a record being modified, or a record being deleted? Uh, we're going to set this up so it could be triggered off either a record being added or a record being modified. So we'll actually need two signal start events, but for this one, let's go ahead and set it to uh, capture any records that are added to the system. Uh, down here, we're looking for different filter conditions that the record needs to meet before it triggers this business process. So for this example, I'm just going to use a single condition that we want to read the region column on that account record. And we're just looking for that region field to be filled in. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this equal sign to it is filled in. And now any new account record that's added to the system that has the region field filled in will automatically trigger this business process. Uh, the last step is just to label this element. It makes it a little bit easier to refer back to later. So let's just go ahead and call this account created. Like I mentioned, we'll also want to capture or change the security anytime somebody modifies that lookup on an existing account. So we will need a second signal start event, which I'll place right below that. That'll also be looking at the account object. And this time we're going to be looking for records that are modified. You can see an additional field where it asks me which changes we are expecting. So I'm going to say we're looking for changes in any of the selected fields, which will of course be the region column. You can search for region. Go ahead and select that. And then we'll apply those same filter conditions. So we don't want this process being used unless that region field is filled in. Okay. We'll go ahead and relabel this signal start event to account modified. Not required to relabel these. It just makes your process a little bit easier. Okay, so now we have two signal starts. So anytime an account is added to the system, that has its region filled in, it'll automatically launch this process. And anytime an account record is modified, anytime someone makes a change to that region field, that'll also launch the same process. Uh, the next step is going to be using that read data element I mentioned earlier. So that's listed here under the system actions. So we're going to read some information from the account record that launched this process. I'm going to go ahead and drag that read data out onto the screen. And it's going to ask me, or let me fill in all of the setting, the settings, excuse me, over here on the right-hand side. Okay, so we are going to read from the first record in the selection, and then it asks us which object we want to read data from. So we're of course going to be reading from the account object. And how does the system know which account we want to read information on? Uh, we define that by using the filters. So this is actually going to have two conditions. We're going to start by looking at the ID 
of the record, and we're actually going to compare that to a process parameter by using the compare with parameter functionality. That will allow us to read the ID of the, pro of the record that triggered this process. So you can see here, by looking at the signal start event for an account creation, we can read the ID value of that specific record. We'll also need to add a second condition that looks for the ID also using a parameter of any account that was modified. Uh, the last step here is to switch this to an OR statement. So now either will be targeted by this read data. So any account that's added to the system or any account that's modified, it'll know to read the ID value or it'll know to read information from that specific account record. Down here at the bottom, we need to define what exactly we are reading from that record. Down here where it says read data from all columns, I'm going to switch that to read data from selected columns only. And I define those columns down here. So the only information we're going to need is the ID of the account record that we'll be modifying the access rights on. And we also need to know what region it was set to via that new lookup. So I go ahead and select those two columns, go ahead and hit save, and we see that display down here at the bottom. Uh, you could potentially use the read data from all columns and still have that same information. It's obviously not recommended. Uh, anytime you're setting up a business process, you should try to be as specific as possible and only read the absolute minimum required information to save on the processing power. Okay. I can go ahead and relabel this read element as well. Just read account info. Okay. So let's go ahead and connect our signal starts to the read data element by simply dragging the arrows. And this is how the process will know which route it's supposed to take. You can also drag and drop these around to make everything look symmetrical. All right. Okay. Next step is we're going to need to read the system administration object out of that lookup list. So for that, we're also going to use a read data system action. I can go ahead and drag that out onto my screen. And we'll set this up somewhat similarly. So which object are we going to read data from? This time we're going to be reading directly from the region lookup. How are we going to filter these records? Once again, we're going to be looking for the specific records ID and that's going to be based off the process parameter. We're looking for the region that we read earlier off of that account record. So what information is this read data element going to read? We're only going to read all the selected columns, and we're really only interested in that organizational role that's defined as part of that lookup list. So we go ahead and select the organizational roles, and we see that populated down here at the bottom. Oops. Okay. should also relabel this, that we're reading the region lookup. And then go ahead and connect the previous read data to our new read data element. All right. Next, we're going to need to actually change those access rights by using the change access rights system action. So I can go ahead and drag that out here onto my layout. It wants to know which object we're changing the access rights to. So once again, we're going to be changing the access rights to a specific account record. It wants to know which records access rights we're changing. So we only want to change a single accounts record. So once again, we're going to use the filter 
we're going to build a condition for ID, and we're going to point that towards our read account info element as it captured the ID of the record that launched this process. So it's only going to change that single account's access rights. You do have to be somewhat careful when you're setting up these business processes. If you don't set up your filter correctly, you might clear or set you know, access rights over a large number of records accidentally or incorrectly. In this example, we're only going to be changing the access rates of a single account, whatever account it was that triggered this process to run. Uh, down here at the bottom, it's going to ask us which access rights we want to remove. So I'm going to start by removing all of the access rights off of this record, as they're going to be reapplied in just a moment based on the region that was selected. Uh, you can choose to remove only specific users, employees, or specific roles. Uh, in this example, I think it makes more sense to take off all of the access rights and then reassign based on what we saw in that lookup list. So you also have the option of choosing whether the read, edit, or delete rights are all removed or just uh, any combination of those three. Okay. And then we need to define which access rights we're going to add. So I can go ahead and hit the plus button. We're going to add rights for a specific user role. It's going to be one of those region organizational roles we defined earlier. Here it asks us to specify what that role is. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. We're going to use the process parameter once again. And this time we're going to look at our second read uh, data element, which is reading the region lookup. And we're going to select the organizational role that we read earlier. Go ahead and save that. And again, we can define whether it's going to apply read, edit, or delete permissions. I think a pretty common request we have is to not allow anybody except for system admins to delete. So we're going to keep delete unchecked and just apply read and edit permissions. Okay. This could use a relabeling as well. We'll go ahead and call this set account security. All right. So let's go ahead and connect this. Squish this together a little bit. I zoomed in and my uh, screen's a little cluttered. And then the last piece we'll need is that terminate end event, of course, which we can drag out here. And we'll need to connect that as well. Okay, so everything looks good. Let's go ahead and save this process. Hopefully I set it all up correctly. We'll test it here in just a second. Okay, so let me go to my other tab, which is still on the process library. If I go back to the account section, let's go ahead and find an account record. I'm going to use my own account, my technology advisors here. If we look at the access rights using the action menu, it should be set to the all employees role. Well, it has many. It's actually all employees as well as myself, because I was the one who created this record. What we should see is once I change that region lookup, it should delete all of these permissions and reapply based on the region I select. So like I said, I'm going to cross my fingers that I set that up correctly. And we'll go ahead and make a change to the region lookup here. Let's go ahead and use the central region. I go ahead and save this record. and recheck those access rights. It does look like it worked correctly, so it removed all of the read, edit, and delete permissions like it was supposed to, and has assigned the read permission to the central region, the edit permission to the central region, and has explicitly denied the central region from making any deletes to this record. Uh, you'll notice it does not list system administrators under delete. Keep in mind, that's actually controlled through a system setting. So even though nothing is listed under delete, as a system administrator, I would still be able to potentially delete this record. Okay. Let's just go ahead and change that one more time, just to make sure it works correctly for a different region. 
Go ahead and switch that to the Western region. Go ahead and save. If we look at the access rates one more time, it should be set to the West region, which it looks like it is, which is good. If we go back to our system designer one more time, we'll check this in the process log. We should have two separate processes, one for each time we change the region. And it looks like it did complete those processes correctly. If I wanted to go back and see the execution diagram, I could. This is useful if you're ever needing to troubleshoot a process. I think a lot of times when people set these up, they can get their ID filters a little mixed up. But once again, you have to be very careful when you're building the process, especially on that change access rights element. I would certainly encourage everybody to test this on a development or a test instance if they have one available. Uh, but it did hit all of our system elements correctly. So it passed through both read data elements, it changed the account security, and then hit the terminate event, which set it to the completed status, which is correct.